In the previous video, we looked at this interesting dynamic system here. It's, I call it the springy pendulum. We got this mass, it's bouncing on the end of a string and it's swinging around. And one in interesting thing about it is the energy budget. So if I plot the kinetic energy, that's this orange bar here, it depends just upon the speed squared of the, of the mass. And you can see the fluctuating when, it's, when the mass is going faster, the kinetic energy is bigger. When it's going slower, it dips down. And next, I'm going to add in the potential energy due to gravity, which depends upon the height of the pendulum. And if I add those two types of energy together, I get this red bar, which also fluctuates, right? So, so kinetic plus gravitational potential is this other fluctuation indicated in red. And then if I add in also the spring potential, which depends upon the stretch or compression of the of the spring squared, I get that blue bar. And now when I add all three of these energies together, they add up to a constant. This system is conservative in the sense that that total energy, kinetic plus gravitational potential plus spring potential is constant. That thing's preserved quite miraculously, beautifully. In this video, I'd like to focus on this system right here, which is, I don't know what I call this, springy pendulum with a slider, right? Maybe it looks like the springy pendulum, but it also has this extra mass here, which uh, it slides along this horizontal line without any friction, I should add. So I got an extra degree of freedom, an extra mass here, and these dynamics are kind of cool, aren't they? A little more rich than just the springy pendulum. Sometimes it swings all the way up almost to the top. Sometimes it, sometimes, sometimes it actually makes it over. Not sure we're going to see it right here, uh, but uh, there it goes. <laughs> it went over. Um, but yeah, another interesting dynamic systems. So let me let me pause this thing. Let me see if I can remember how to pause it. There we go. I paused it. And if you look at right here, hmm, let's just look at this 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 the pendulum mass all by itself. If we look at the free body diagram of the pendulum mass, we see the weight, we see the spring force, and these are the same forces that are on the springy pendulum, right? These are the same conservative forces that are on the pendulum. So bear with me. So here's an argument. The system that consists of just the pendulum mass should be a conservative system, right? So the, the kinetic energy of the pendulum mass plus the potential energy due to the weight plus the potential energy of that spring all by themselves should be add up to a constant. What do you think? All right, so let's try it out. We have this springy slider mass pendulum thingy and it's doing its dynamics over the top. I love that when that happens. And the theory was that we're going to take the kinetic energy of the pendulum, this mass up here, so that's the orange bar. We're going to add, oops, let's create a running sum too. So the red bar is going to be a running sum. We're going to add to that kinetic energy. We're going to add in the gravitational potential. So that's the green bar. So add those two together. We're still getting a, a gyrating sum here because we have to add in the spring, right? So let's add in the potential energy of the spring. That's the blue bar. And oh, what's going on? This is not constant. Something is different here, right? This suggesting that the kinetic energy of the of just the mass here with the spring attached to it and the gravity acting on it, it is not that energy is not conserved, right? It's not conserved. What's going on? What's going on? Well, you see the kinetic energy of the sliders in here. Why don't we just for fun of it? put that in as well. So one, two, three, here we go. I've got it in there. So I've got kinetic energy of both pieces in there now. And look at the sum now. Whoa. Now it's constant. So what was wrong with our argument before? Where did we go wrong? Remember our argument was we've got this, this pendulum mass right here. It's got a spring force on it. It's got a weight acting on it. And when I did the springy pendulum all by itself, all these things, we said that all these forces acting on the mass here are conservative. So 
the mass, the kinetic energy of the mass plus the spring potential plus the weight should have to add up to a constant, just like it did for the springy pendulum. Right? Where's the flaw in that argument? Think about it. Pause the video and come back. So you recall in our video about the springy pendulum, we drew this circle right here of, of radius L0. L0 is the natural length of the spring. And whenever the, the pendulum is inside that circle, this, the spring would be in, in compression. When it's outside, the spring would be in tension. As we discussed, sometimes that spring would do positive work on the mass, and sometimes it would do negative work. So let's take a specific example. Here's a snapshot in time. At this instant, the mass is inside the ring, so therefore the spring is in compression. The spring force, Fs here, is pushing outward. At the same instant, let's also suppose that the velocity vector is somewhere around this way. So what does this mean about the spring, right? At this instant, the spring is in compression, but it's getting less compressed, right? Because it's because the mass is moving towards the circle, right? If the spring is becoming less compressed, then the gra then the spring potential, right? The spring potential must be decreasing. But at the same time, what's happening to the kinetic energy of the mass here? Well, look at the work. Work is an integral of the spring force, at least the work done by the spring is the integral of F dot dr. If I look at the dot product of F, the spring force, with the little dr here in the direction it's motion, then this thing, this integrand is positive. The spring is doing positive work on the, on the mass, so therefore its contribution to kinetic energy must be increasing. Here we see a clear pathway uh, for the flow of energy to go from the spring potential to the mass kinetic energy. And that's the only way it can go. The spring is also pushing on the mount point for the pendulum, but the mount point is stationary. Since the mount point is not moving, the spring does no work on that end. All the work goes into the kinetic energy of, of the mass. In contrast with the sliding springy contraption we have over here, the amount that the spring is compressed depends upon the location of both the, the pendulum mass, the pen, the ma that is the mass at the end of the spring here, and also the slider mass, right? Both those masses contribute to uh, the state of ex uh, stretch or compression in the spring. They both determine the amount of uh, kinetic, excuse me, they both determine the amount of potential energy in that spring. So therefore, the spring does work on both, both masses. And therefore, when we include the contribution, when we, I should say, when we include the work done by the spring onto both masses, then we get a, an energy budget for which we have a total energy which is conserved. Woo! There we go. And here we have this, this, this remarkable little uh, dynamical system that, that I could watch for a long time. Now, before we end this video, let's again think about the role of damping. So when I push the D key, it's going to stick a damper between these two masses, where the spring is in, in parallel. So first I want you to look at just the structure itself. The next time we'll run it again, we'll look at the, the energy budget here. So here we go. One, two, three. Damping is in place. And you can see that structure, those oscillations sort of die out, right? It sucks the energy from the system. So let's restart and then we'll actually look at the, at the energy budget. So here the thing is swinging around. This time, look at those, those bars. So one, two, three, enter the damping, and watch that red bar. There's their total energy, and it is, you can see the energy being siphoned out of the system as these oscillations die out. Now, a really cool engineering application of this damp pendulum occurs in this building right here. It's called Taipei 101. It's one of the world's largest, tallest buildings. This exists in a part of the world where there are hurricane force winds called typhoons. 
and you can imagine the forces acting on this building. Now when the winds start rocking this building, the pendulum starts swinging and you can see down at the bottom there are these dampers. Here it comes. You can see there at the bottom, see those dampers? Those suck energy right out of the swinging, <laughs> out of the swinging pendulum and brings the, keeps the, keeps the building from toppling over. It's amazing. So that ends our video on the sliding, springing, swinging pendulum contraption. The next video will be on the amazing double pendulum.